Hi guys, welcome to uh, Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Um, today's video is on the bag, band, bag. It's on the band, it's on the band Fog Hat and its influence on Southern rock and roll and how they shaped a genre. Take a look. Can a band be considered a Southern rock band if they are not from the South? What if that band isn't even from America? Fog Hat brings up precisely this condiment from uh, the band formed in London, England in 71. Singer guitarist Dave Perrette, also known as Lonesome Dave, drummer Roger Earl, and bassist Tony Stevens, all left of Savoy Brown. Uh, then they teamed up with guitarist Rod Price to start the band Fog Hat. They would go on to have seven albums that reached gold or platinum status, and they achieved five top 40 singles. Southern rock uh, draws from rock and roll, country, and blues elements. Uh, bands such as the Allman Brothers, the Charlie Daniels Band, Leonard Skinner, Marshall Tucker Band are all good examples. Uh, the band signed a recording deal with Alan Grossman's Bearsville Records shortly after forming. Their self-titled debut album was recorded in Wales at producer Dave Edmonds' Rockfield Studio. The album featured Todd Rund uh, Rundgren, on piano and Andy Fairweather low on back vocals. I just want to make love to you was the lead single and peaked at number 83 on the Billboard Top 100. The band moved to New York City and benefited heavily from the new FM radio format. Fog Hat's albums were a combination of originals and covers. Uh, songs written by Chuck Berry, Big Joe Turner, uh, Buddy Holly, Robert Johnson, Al Green, and Willie Dixon were mixed in with favorite and price originals. Uh, the ingredients they used fit in perfectly with a southern rock recipe. Their second album was also self-titled, but known as Rock and Roll because of the cover uh, photo of rock and roll, of a rock and a bread roll. Uh, the record charted higher than their debut, perhaps thanks to, uh, in part, to Rod Price's slide guitar being featured prominently. He became known as the Magician of the Slide. Uh, the band's biggest success came with 1975's album Fool for the City. Bassist Tony Stevens left the band and returned to England to eventually become a successful session musician. Producer Nick Jamison played bass and keyboards on the album. Craig McGregor was added to the full-time lineup as bassist. Fool for the City went platinum with the success of the title song and Fog Hat's biggest hit, Slow Ride. Wasn't really that slow of a ride, Fool being their fifth album, but the band finally had a really big hit album, as well as a signature song. 1977, the Fog Hat released their first live album, uh, presenting most of their best performing songs in the band's preferred live element, and thanks to its arriving smack dab in the middle of the heyday of their live album, uh, the album sold well and reached number 11 on the Billboard album charts on its way to double platinum certification in America with sales over 2 million. Uh, the next album, Stone Blue, was returned to the studio where the band worked with famed engineer Eddie Kramer, who previously worked with Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix. Another version of Robert Johnson's Sweet Home Chicago was a noticeable shift in traditional blues direction. It was the last Foghead album to be certified gold. Named, to the, uh, named for the studio it was recorded in, Boogie Motel was released in 79. The single Third Time Lucky, First Time I Was a Fool hit uh, number 23 in the Billboard Hot 100. be the band's final appearance in the top 40 singles charts. Uh, the band continued with different lineups and have released albums regularly since. Um, back in I think it was 1998 I bought a, a, a bar nightclub uh, in a small town that I live in um, and I had it for like uh, oh 10 years or so I didn't last very long but uh, I got out of the I just couldn't didn't know I don't drink so it's kind of hard but uh, so I got out of that but uh, at one point we had fog hat booked in a little town of 1200 people and everybody was excited about it. And uh, and one day I'm sitting in the office and uh, over the fax came a, a piece of paper come up out of the fax with the uh, logo of Fog Hat at the top and uh, found out that the drummer had cancer and was going to have to go through chemo and stuff. So they had to cancel. It was a sad day for them and us. <laughs> but I just thought that was a cool little story in case, in case you wanted to know that. <laughs> anyway. Um, Fog Hat's a great band, man. 
if you haven't really given them a chance other than they're really, you know, like slow ride and stuff, give them, give them a listen. Uh, go look up Fog Hat and get and listen to some of the lesser heard stuff. It's good. Please don't forget about classic TV facts and trivia. Uh, today it's on Gilligan's Island over there. Uh, please subscribe. And if you do me a favor, uh, hit that little like button down there for me. It'll attract more people in here to watch for me. Uh, and it'll let me know that you really like what I'm doing. I will appreciate it. Have a great day. God bless you. Praying for you.